Hello and welcome to the Gilshrat channel. I'm JB and in today's video I'm going to show you how to do what is generally a fairly easy decoder installation. Uh, I have this locomotive here. This is a EF57. It's an early electric locomotive that was used in the 30s. And I'm going to be installing this Digitrax drop-in decoder into this locomotive. So this is about as easy as it's going to get in end scale. I've actually never seen a like an 8-pin plug-in decoder in end scale. So usually these decoders where you just swap out the light board, mm, that's about the easiest it gets. So let's take a look and see how you do it. All right. So here I have the locomotive with the top of the box pulled off. And we're going to pop this out. And I'm going to show you how to install this decoder here. So this is a DN163K4A. Uh, and this is basically a swap out decoder that from my research and my experience, and this could be different for you, but so far I found that this particular decoder uh, replaces quite a few of the light boards in Kato electric and diesel locomotives. So this is a good decoder uh, to have. I actually ordered two of these because I have a feeling that in the future when I buy another electric or diesel locomotive from Kato it'll probably use this same decoder. So we'll go ahead and we'll pop the locomotive out of the box. Take off this special thing for packaging during the shipping. Just keeps it from moving around. And then we're just going to very gently and very carefully pop the shell off. Just should be a matter of slightly prying the edges of the upper shell. And that just should come loose. Really simple. And it pops out. Okay. And we do have this arrow, if you look here, uh, right there. That arrow lets you know which way is forward. And there should be a similar marking on here. Yep. So on the metal here, you can also see. So this way you can make sure that you line up the shell with the frame of the locomotive. So if you look in here, you'll see that there is this light board, a metal frame that's split and isolated from each side so it picks up the power and it goes through the frame. The decoder is actually going to pick up electricity from both sides of the frame. So you'll notice on here, you'll see that there is Compton tape here as well as a sticker to help insulate the decoder so it doesn't short out on the weights and cause there to be a bridge of the gap between the two halves of the weight that pick up power from each set of wheels. So looking at this decoder, you can see this closer that you have these little notches, a notch here, and a notch here, and a notch here and here. And this holds the decoder in place. And then there's this little plastic piece that holds the decoder over the springs that bring electricity to the motor. So we're going to have to pop this out, and then we're going to have to gently push up on this piece so that it bends out a little bit, and I can release it from these notches that hold the decoder in place. Yep, oh, there it goes. Okay. Pop that out. There's a metal piece here and here. We're just going to pop those out. There are notches here, here. You pull it up a little bit, pull the decoder, push it this way, like this, and then this should unhook this from these notches, and now you can slide out the LED light board. So I pulled out the little metal pieces that bring power from the light board down into the motor, and so now I'm going to swap out this board with this one. So this board here is labeled Kato 3066. So this light board appears to be an exact match for the Digitrax DN163K4A.
So this, like this, and now this is going to go in like this. This part's a little bit tricky because you have to get these lined up. Then you have to push the decoder into place and put it in. Okay. So now it should have power pickup from here. We have this insulated so that there's no electrical conductivity between there. This should be held in place by these little tabs here. So these notches are now holding here. This is bringing power into the decoder. You have these pieces that are going down into the motor to make sure the motor gets power. And then before we finish, we're going to go ahead and put this little plastic piece in here. Let's just make sure that those little metal tabs are nicely secured to the decoder chip. So now we'll put her on the program track, see if I can read the decoder, program it, and we'll see how it runs. Alright, so I have the locomotive here on the test track. I'm going to go ahead and turn on power. Alright, so that looks good. Our headlight came on, the forward headlight came on. And I don't hear the motor buzzing, so we got electrical insulation from the track power, so that's good. Uh, I have my throttle set to address 3, which is the default of the decoder. And let's see how it runs. Alright, we're moving forward, good. Let's go reverse. That seems to be running really well there too. So we can uh, tweak the motor control, the start voltage, mid voltage, and top voltage. And we'll go ahead and program it. So after programming the locomotive, I went to put the shell back on and realized it did not fit. So I looked at the decoders and I realized that the old light board had very, very snugly been fit into the shell. If you look at the original light board and compare it to the decoder, you'll see that there are very few electronic components on the board, very few chips. And if you look at the shell, you will see that there are little notches perfectly aligned for the LEDs and the couple little chips on the light board. But the DCC decoder has many more components on it, and these components are actually smashing up against the shell. So fortunately, though, there's a little bit of a cavity above the shell where there's some detailed parts. So I took out my Dremel tool, and I went in and cut out part of the shell to create more room. After I did this, the shell was able to snugly fit onto the locomotive, and the locomotive worked properly. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you like this video or are interested in Japanese trains or trains in general, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel. You can also check out my website at gilshret.info. Additionally, I'm on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash gilshret and Twitter at twitter.com forward slash gilshret channel. And once again, thanks for watching.